Okay, greetings. Good morning, family. Um, so let me just... Uh, I need to add somebody. Uh, let's see... I'm just trying to um, add... Ah, there she is. Hang on. Uh, just bear with me. There she is. Okay, so let's just see. Let me just... Um... Okay. Okay, so just bear with me. Ah, there she is. There she is. Oh, hey. lovely. Lovely. Hey. Okay. So um so good morning everyone. Good morning everyone. Lovely to see everybody. Um so welcome to this space. Um Yvonne and I wanted to put this gentle um event on just to allow give us an opportunity to have our own space um to be able to work through whatever's going on for us um so before we um get into it um i'm a therapist for those of you that don't know me and, and are new to my page um and i focus primarily on working with clients around racial trauma and also i work with a lot of black women um around uh, healing the mother wound um, and I'm really excited about having Yvonne in this space today as well. So Yvonne, if you just want to introduce yourself and, um, and then we'll get started. Greetings, greetings everyone. Um, I'm Yvonne J. Douglas, otherwise known as the Starseed Alchemist. Um, I am also a therapist. I'm also um, a shamanic practitioner and a high priestess. And I help people with healing and ascension and their shadow work. And yes, it's great to be uh, live with June. We formed Goddesses of the Round Table in 2020. And mm -hmm. it's nice to be back live with her just to kind of help people to have an alternate focus on today and mm -hmm. to look at what it really means for us what's going on and to honor our ancestors and just to give you some healing, some hope and some. Mm. Oh, you've got um, if you muted yourself, Yvonne. Oh, there you are, you've come back now. Yeah, someone called me. Um, okay. Just... Okay, okay, great. So yeah, so we wanted to, this space was really important for us. Obviously we know that um, today is also the day that Queen Elizabeth um, is being buried. She's got a funeral today. Um, and we just thought it was appropriate for us to also have a space. We know that there's been a lot of conflicting um, opinions about, you know, her death and how we grieve as a community. And so, you know, I've, I've already, you know, did a few live streams in the, uh, last week about it. But we just thought, you know, um, Yvonne and I thought we'd come together and just create this space for us to be able to have our own um, collective idea, collective, um, you know, community uh, healing space as well um, at this time, because this is, you know, not everybody wants to watch what's going to be going on um, in terms of Queen Elizabeth. So we thought it was appropriate for us to hold space for us so that we can grieve and honour our ancestors and also what's been happening for us. Mm. So um, what I'd like to do um, to get started is... Um, I'm going to have like a, we're going to pour some libation. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that don't know what a libation is, libation is a ritual that our ancestors practiced thousands and thousands of years ago. There, there are pictures of libation uh, on the walls of the um, pyramids in Kemet. Um, and so it's something that is important for, for me um, and for us as a community um, to to do, you know, in honouring our ancestors. So, okay, so just, I'm just gonna pause and, and just, um, just ask everyone just to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Another deep breath in 
Turn a deep breath out. Okay, so I just wanted to use that just breath just to ground myself and to ground ourselves as well um, so that we can so that we can just allow ourselves to receive whatever we need to receive from what we're going to be doing today. Mm. Okay, so, so I'm just going to, I'm reading from this book, Speaking with Spirit, and there is a prayer for libation, okay? So what I'm going to be doing as I read this, I'm going to be pouring water, okay, onto this, this mixture here of, it's a mixture of soil and sand, and this, um, this soil and sand actually came from um, the shores of Africa. I went to um, one of the old um, castles where they enslaved our ancestors before they put them on the boat. And I actually took some of the sand and soil from there to bring home for my altar work. So I'm gonna be pouring libation directly on this soil that came from that place, okay? And just to add, I, I will be pouring at the same time. I have a plant here and um so anyone if you want to join in as well you can also find a plant get some water and join in as well with pouring the libation and just before we we do that i'd like to just call in the elements um of air of fire of water and of earth of the north south the east and the west to join us and to protect us and to be with us in this space as we start to honour our ancestors and to go deep within ourselves during this time. Ashe. Okay. Ashe, thank you for that. Okay, so we give thanks and praises to the creator of all things, known by many names. Give thanks for you giving us this day. We thank you for all things, both great and small. We give thanks to the elements, air, fire, water, earth. We give thanks to all great forces of nature. We give thanks to our divine spirit guides. We give thanks to our great and noble ancestors who watch over our families. We give thanks to the elevated ancestors who worked to uplift our people. We ask you to continue to walk with us. Bless our homes, our communities, our friends, our brothers and sisters. Protect us from all hurt and harm. Let us treat and speak to each other with kindness. Let us use our time wisely. Let us keep our home and bodies free from all toxins. Let us do that which is for our highest good. Let us be in tune with nature and each other. Protect our communities near and far. Let us be a part of the healing of our planet. We pray for the air and waters to be clear. We pray for peace in the world and that my art will be restored to the planet once again. Ashe, Amen, Ra, my art. Ooh. feel that presence feel that power feel the essence of your soul rising up at this time beloved oh 
connect to your ancestors. They are mighty and powerful and they are with us at this time, this turbulent time, this confusing time for many, that they are with us and they are helping us get through it. We must remember them, we must connect to them so that we can work together for the greater good of humanity. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Oh, that was nice. I felt quite emotional. Okay. Doing that. It is. If you feel emotional when you connect to your ancestors, that's absolutely okay. It's normal. It's normal. Yeah. Yeah. Feel their essence around you. Some of you may even hear what they have to say. And some of you may get visions within your third eye. They may be showing you what it is you need to do right now. And some of you may be just feeling the power of them around you. It's important at this time to honor the ancestors because our ancestors have been through so much, so, so much. And the more you heal, beloved, the more you heal your ancestral lineage. We want to focus on the healing. We want to move away from what is going on in the world today, just for this moment, so that we can honour them, the suffering that they encountered due to the institutions, the cults that are ruling at this moment. Although they are falling, they are crumbling right before our eyes. Use your eyes of faith and wisdom to see what is truly going on in the world. Do not focus on the theatrics that they are showing you, but focus on yourself. Put yourself first for once in your life. Listen to the messages that lay within you. You are a powerful being. You have come here in human form, but you are a powerful being. You are a spiritual being, just having this human experience. Connect to yourself. Be selfish, it's absolutely fine. Especially if you've led a life of people pleasing. Focus on yourself today. The distractions continue day in and day out, stopping you from focusing on being your greatest self. Let go of the distractions, beloved. We humbly ask you to let go of the distractions. Mm. That was really nice. I'm going to try really hard not to cry today because I feel really emotional. June, don't try not to yeah. cry. Come on. Yeah. Come the tears, man. It's absolutely fine. Our tears are welcome. Our tears are healing. We can be crying for ourselves. We can be crying for the ancestors. Mm. It's okay. Yeah. Those tears are falling back into the earth. Mm. This was an important part of why this was important for both of us to do this. Because I think as a community, we don't always understand what it means to grieve, what it means to mourn. And 
the concept of racial grief in particular, mm. which is what this is really all about. Um, and I just want to read a passage from what is it? the book that I was using now here is that is specifically about mourning. Mm. And I'm reading from this book. Okay. Um, he's actually a Buddhist, okay. a black gay Buddhist Ooh. priest. Yes, absolutely adore his work. So he says, in my healing, I am also mourning. Sometimes I'm in despair. Mourning and despair are very private matters. It is my acknowledgement that there is suffering. It is my honouring of my discomfort, as well as the discomfort of everyone else in the world. Much of my freedom and joy is bound up in my capacity to mourn. Mm. Mourning is my attempt to acknowledge heartbrokenness, accept it, and offer it space to be in my experience, so it may do its work of teaching me and passing through. Whenever I feel this energy, I allow it. And it is something that I am encouraging others to do as well. When we are sitting with someone, it is an expression of compassion to offer them the space to move through their heartbrokenness. When we get bad news about someone we love, initially we may feel a really intense tightness or mental contraction. It's like being shocked. After that, we have the opportunity to relax into the crisis, even though that feels really intense to do. That relaxing is not an expression of not caring. It's not an expression of apathy. It's actually an expression of trying to be in wisdom or trying to experience wisdom or clarity, which will help us make the better choices to be in relationship with that crisis or to handle the crisis, really. In, experience, in experiencing grief within spaciousness, we are able to allow grief to move through our experience and we can slowly experience liberation over time from this energy. So in reading that, it helps me understand the importance of thinking about our ancestors and also thinking about what's happening currently mm. as well. Um, and allowing myself to relax into the grief. I know you just obviously said to me to not hold back crying. Um, and I suppose he's just, he's just reiterated okay. that. Absolutely. You know, grief teaches us so much and it does give us the capacity to grow, actually. When my mum passed, now an ancestor, I, I, the grief process was very hard. However, mm -hmm. my capacity to grow, to, to love, just grew from that, from that experience. And so in this world, we, we don't get given enough time to grieve you know, after five or four days or whatever, you're back at work. My goodness. Yeah. It's really terrible. Grief is a process. There's five stages of grief and we need to allow ourselves the time and the space to grieve. And at the moment, many, there's a division around what's going on. Mm. Many are seeing what's been done historically to our ancestors. And not just to our ancestors, but to humanity at large, actually. Yeah. And people are actually stating this, but they're being shut down by those who want to honour the Queen. But actually, we are also allowed our feelings. Yeah. What's coming up for those of us who are grieving, mourning, what's happened to our ancestors, and what's still happening. Yeah. It's allowed we yeah. are allowed this space. Yeah. And I think that's what makes uh, grieving so difficult for us as a community, actually, is the fact that, you know, our ancestors were not allowed to grieve. 
they were not allowed to grieve. And it's almost as if that pattern of holding ourselves, suppressing all of that, how we feel about our ancestors or even people that are being murdered in this day and age, you know, this institution mm. is still murdering our people. You know, when I think about, um, you know, the recent death of um, Brother Chris Carver and mm. what happened there and the mm. fact that our communities are still being murdered by these institutions, mm -hmm. you know, and we not, we're, not, we're not being given the space, we're not being given the respect to be able to do that. Mm. And this is all part of how the institution works. This is how the system operates. Because if we can't grieve, it means that we're holding all of that. We're yeah. holding all of that in our tissues. We're holding all of that in our bodies. And even the fact that I am feeling quite emotional, you know, it, it, it's, this is all the grief coming up. Yes. Absolutely. This is all the grief coming up. You know, somebody's just put in the comments about en enslavement desensitizing us, you know, and that is true. Yes, very desensitized pain. And when you hold all of that pain in your body, it then manifests as physical illness. Yeah. Yeah. When you're going around with so much pain, it actually helps feed the 1%, the institution. Because yeah. they love to feed off the negativity and the yeah. pain, and fear, and the sadness, and the anger, and the rage. They feed mm -hmm. off it. And they separate humanity. Yeah. They even use racism to separate humanity. Mm. Because when you think about it, it's 1% of them, 99% of the rest of us. Yeah. That's a rough average. And if we all came together, imagine what could happen. Yeah. So I'm, I, I implore everyone to release the pain, the anger, the rage, whatever it is that you're holding. Give yourself time and space to do that. You yeah. are not weak. It's not a weakness to express yourself. It's a strength. Yeah. Yeah. I also believe that a lot of the anger that we see in our community is actually grief. Yes. I've always thought that the rage, all of that stuff that feels so intense. A lot of times when we feel angry about certain things, it's, it's very rarely that what we think, it's very rarely the thing that we think that we're angry about is what we're angry about. Exactly. It's Anger is such an easy um, emotion to express, but when you when you break it down behind the anger, there's so much other things. There's shame. There's guilt. Hurt. There's grief. Pain. There's hurt. Yeah, yeah. And for us, you know, just talking about the stuff that's coming through intergenerationally, a lot of that I believe is anger and rage and grief and hurt that our ancestors weren't able to express. Absolutely, they weren't allowed to. Absolutely. They weren't allowed to. Right. So when I hear you talking about um, letting, letting it out, you know, I think it's also important to think about where you're expressing that. Yes. Because sometimes I think that a lot of times that pain, the, the anger and the rage and all of that, it often gets expressed towards people that look like us. Yes comes out sideways we call it I call it it comes out sideways yeah and so you're 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 not looking at it in the right way you're not dealing with it in the right way you're you're getting angry revengeful at maybe your partner maybe your brother maybe your friend maybe your sister your mother instead of actually getting a space mm. a healthy space yeah. To be able to express that anger healthily. Yeah. Because it is, you're, you're allowed to express it, but when it comes out sideways towards other people, that's not the way to do it. Yeah. That's not the way to do it. And that's why we as therapists hold space for people to be able to explore their anger in yeah. a space. Mm. 
Yeah. And I think sometimes as well, I think that anger is demonized as well. It's demonized. And I think the reason why anger is demonized is because our experience of anger has always been within the context of abuse, whether it's abuse systemically, mm-hmm. whether it's abuse within the family structure, mm-hmm. whether it's abuse within um, our love relationships or families, you know, that's our only experience of anger. And so we don't really understand what it means to express anger in a healthy way. Right. You know, we don't understand what it means to express anger in a healthy way. And that's what I teach a lot of my clients, mm. you know, and reason and the reason why I, I always talk about anger in a way. You know, I read something the other day um, that talked about, and I always talk about anger being your ally. You know, anger yeah. is the part of you that loves you. Yeah. Yes. It's the part of you that loves you. Yeah. It's, it's the part wrong and something needs to be addressed. Right. 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 And there was a training that I did um, last week with um, Brother Resh Momenikin. I don't know if you've... Um, the, the guy that wrote My Grandmother's Hands. He's a, okay. he's a drug therapist. And he talks about the, context, the concept of clean pain and dirty pain. I like that. I remember you saying that on one of your lives. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. So for those of you that didn't see that live or don't understand that concept, so, so clean pain is the pain that we're feeling in the moment. Somebody says something to you or does something to you and, you know, you're in pain about that particular thing and then you, you, you try and address it with that person, okay? So that's clean pain. It might be that you don't really, you know, you feel uncomfortable about addressing that particular thing with that person, but you address it with them even though it's painful to do it. That's clean pain. Dirty pain is pain that that is that is been that's old. It's old. Okay. Something else I read um, that came from Reshma, um, one of Reshma's colleagues. He says something about rage is anger that has aged. Absolutely, absolutely. Rage is anger that has aged. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of the anger that we see in our community and within our families and all of that, it's all linked. It's historical. Yeah. 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 That you've held on to, that you've held on to, but also that you've, that you're, that's in your DNA from your ancestors. Yeah. And we've all come in into the, this human form with different, what was it, different energies. We've all brought in different pains from our soul. And so we've all got to explore what it is that we've brought in mm. and heal that. And I remember years ago, um, I went on a shamanic course and I, um, this person, Natalia Natalia O'Sullivan, and she wrote this book, The Ancestral Continuum. Mm. Fantastic book. For those of you, just to pause you, Yvonne, for those, there's a few people that have asked for what are the titles of the books and all of that that we're showing. At the end, we will show all the books that we've read in this session, and then you can take screenshots. So don't worry about what you've, um, you've not got. We'll show them all the books at the end and then you can then you can screenshot them. So apologies, Yvonne, carry on. That's fine, that's fine. I haven't actually um, looked at what a, a passage to read, but I just want to say it's, because um, this book, it says it unlocks the secrets of who you really are. And it gives you great insight into what you can be carrying and how you are connected to your ancestors and how the healing process that you go through will affect your ancestors going back and your, those going forward. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that. The more we heal ourselves, the more you clear up the pain going back. Okay. And obviously you're breaking patterns for those going forward. Mm. This is a very good book, very powerful book. Yeah, can you well, say I, more about that? Sorry? Can you say, say a bit more about that? I'm kind of intrigued about how that works. Okay. 
so when you when we do and when you do ancestral healing especially if you if you have a specific ancestral healing session you you go back to where a certain thing first started mm. so you go back generations so say for example there's addiction in your in your in your lineage Mo most people if you have if you suffer with addiction you're more than likely one of your parents did maybe one of your grandparents and and then you can go back to where it first started. And then you can mm -hmm. and actually, this is, this is in an ancestral healing session specifically. You can go back to the, ori the original ancestor where it started and talk to them. And, he, wow. and the, sh the shaman will actually speak to them and heal and, and have a conversation with them to see how it can be healed. And then it will come through. And then the more you work on yourself, because obviously you also have to integrate this stuff and that's mm -hmm. your shadow work. And the more you heal, the more you clear that energy. Because everything is energy, remember? Yeah. Everything is energy. You start to clear it and clear it and clear it within yourself. Mm -hmm. And it, obviously if you're breaking patterns, mm -hmm. it's going to also affect your children, your grandchildren yeah. going forward. Mm -hmm. But it's a process and it's progress. It, yeah. it, it's not overnight because remember nothing happened overnight mm. so yeah. and been living a life of i would say maybe dysfunction for, for just just to use that word if you've been living that life for 30 40 years the miracles happen bit by bit day yeah. by day month by month year by year yeah it's an unlearning and undoing and mm. yeah and that takes time it takes compassion it Com takes guts. yes it takes it takes a lot of courage you know it one of the i think one of the most common questions that i always hear in our community is why can't black people come together you know i hear that all the time the despair around it and you know i always say to people that we can't come together as a community without people do, starting to do their individual work. Individual work. You know? It starts with the individual work. We have to start doing the work on ourselves. Absolutely. You know? Uh, learn to trust yourself. Learn to love yourself. Have compassion for yourself. Mm. And it's un only until then can you then give that to other people properly. Exactly. properly. exactly. And it starts with telling the truth. It starts with telling the truth. You know, you have to first tell the truth to yourself. You know, you have to first be willing to say, you know what? This thing hurts. Yes. X, Y, Z hurts. Okay. okay. And, you know, people... A lot of the clients, well, not a lot, I would say all of the clients that I work with, you know, have not been, even though institutionally, the system of racism has, there's the toxicity that's obviously hurt us as a community. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the work that I do with my clients, we have to start with what's the people that hurt them, which nine times out of ten, as people that look like them, yeah. that have hurt them. And mostly, the, mostly their, their families. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've internalised it. Yes. And it's blood. It's fight. We can't turn our backs against our, on our family. And, and everybody says blood is thicker than water. Mm -mm. It's not right. thicker than peace. It's not thicker than peace. And it's not thicker than your soul family either. Yeah. Where your soul family offer you unconditional love. Yeah. Yeah, and it's about understanding those things. And I think that's probably, this is, that's probably one of the most painful things about doing the inner work, doing the shadow work, is understanding that you have to do the work in your family, the, the individual work, okay? Understanding all of the pain that's, that's been passed down in your family, but also understand that it's also systemic absolutely you know absolutely. and that both can be true yes both can be true it's not either or 
both can be true yeah and, yeah. and it's not about and a lot of people go around blaming like they may get they may go around like oh but my parents were this and that and da 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 yes yes acknowledging acknowledging that maybe you were brought up in a dysfunctional family acknowledging that systemic racism exists but not blaming because by by blaming you don't take responsibility mm. and we have responsibility for our own healing you have been born into the human condition the human condition is for what a better word is shite <laughs> it's traumatic it's painful it's slavery mm. and everything that comes with it so to one degree or another, we've all got some sort of trauma, but we can't keep blaming because that keeps mm. us stuck and it keeps us not taking responsibility. Yeah. And our responsibility is to unpick, undo, unlearn and mm. heal the pain yeah. of the human condition. Mm. It's our responsibility. Yeah. This is something else that... Um... That, that Lama Rod talks about actually the the, the black gay um, uh, guy right. that talks about he talks about um, how the oppressed are going to be the people that are going to be that, that we're going to liberate ourselves you know we're not going to be liberated by our oppressors that's that, that they they are committed to it. Um, and you know, and I believe that this is part of this. The, this is part of the sickness of of, of racism. You know, they're, they're not going to. This is a system that's been that's been on a mission for the last five hundred years, and it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes our community can get trapped in trying to change. Yeah, what people that practice racism do. Right, they get trapped in it and thinking that they have to explain and beg and plead and and over explain and 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 reason and try and think logically racism is not logic no. it's not it, there's no logical thing about why a system is so is so insane mm. it, it, it's, in, it's it's insanity it is. okay and we give away our power this we give away our power and and you know Everything is as it should be. <laughs> Some people might think, huh? But it, everything is divine timing. Because the majority of people have forgotten who they are. They've forgotten mm -hmm. the power that resides within them. They've forgotten that they are not just human. They are these mighty spiritual beings having a human experience. Yeah. And so sometimes we have to go through stuff in order to rise up and remember who yeah. we are and free ourselves and i want to actually read a passage from this book written by one of my my friends my dear friends um Kemet imani and she published this book last year and she channeled a lot of um she channeled from the ancestors wow. about some of the experiences that our ancestors went through in slavery it's a great book but the passage that I want to read is called Resistance and Rebellion. Wow. Resistance and Rebellion was in our nature. From free in Mama Africa right to the capture, we would kick, punch, scratch and bite, resisting as we could with all our might. We would strangle the catchers with our own chains, but guns were mightier than the spares so at times resisting in vain. We resisted and rebelled week after week. Rebellion and resistance was no place for the meek. On the ships, we jumped overboard, desiring suicide at large. On some successful attempts, we would take charge. Like the Amistad, just one ship to mention, overthrowing the captain and crew, which soon got the attention. On plantations, we did runaways, a daily activity for the captured African who would die for their liberty. Mm. Suicides and poisoning was a usual thing. 
Who the hell was Bukra to tie up any king? We used the drum to, make, to communicate with others on plantations near and far. They were our sisters and brothers. During all trying times, we would burn down plantations. Remember 1791, the revolt by the Haitian. What about Nat Turner, the greatest of all? He knew all too well that they all had to fall. He said, spare no one, not man, woman, nor child, as we know that these demons will oppress us with pride. Kill them all, let none get away, for today we remember our ancestors' names. And there you have the house Negroes who would poison them all by putting poisonous herbs in food, no matter how small. So we continuously resisted with what fate would allow. And we never stopped resisting from then until now. This is, a, this is an amazing book. She channeled the answer. Powerful. Through. And for me, that passage, obviously about killing and, and stuff like that, they had to fight for their lives for survival. survival. But for now it's about resisting what's going on in the world, not getting caught up in the non and being distracted mm. by freeing ourselves from the mental slavery, freeing ourselves from the matrix, freeing ourselves from the system that continues to oppress us. Yeah. And the way we can do that is remembering who we are, doing the shadow work, healing the wounds, and making space for our souls to evolve, to grow, mm -hmm. to combine, and to become sovereign beings of yes. this planet. Yeah. That's how we resist, that's how we rise up. Yeah. And you know what, um, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be big things. No. Okay, it's important for, for, for folks watching to understand that resistance doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go out, you know, you know, you don't have to go out and, 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 and go on a big march. Or, you don't have to do any of that. Resistance can mean making a decision to stop being mean to yourself. Yeah, put yourself first. That's a form of resistance. Absolutely. You know, a form of resistance means... For me, I'll talk about for me, means making sure that I go to therapy. Yes. Go to therapy so that I can so that I can change the patterns of pain that were in my family. Absolutely. Okay? Resistance means not just reading a book, but doing what the book suggests yes. that you do. Yes. Yes. Okay? Taking action. Taking action. You know, somebody's asking about how do you resist in the workplace? Okay, so resisting in the workplace means being honest with yourself about how committed your workplace is to change in terms of um, the workplace culture. Is the workplace culture making you sick? Start mm. there. Mm. Okay, is there a way that you can use your talents that you're using at work to empower your community? Can you take what you're learning in the workplace and set up your own business so that you're using your skills to empower yourself and make money for yourself rather than you making, more, mm -hmm. making money for an institution that don't really care about you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you taking your holidays at work? So break. Right, taking your, keep let's break it all the way down. Can you even sit? Are you taking your lunch break when you're at work? Mm -hmm. Are you leaving at five o'clock? Yes, boundaries, boundaries. Yeah. Well, are you that. choosing? Are you choosing? Here, here's what. Don't let me get my soapbox about the workplace. But I just want to say this one thing about the workplace. Okay, be careful of these organizations that want people of color to come in and be the mascot 
for anti-racism, okay, but they're not paying you any extra money. They don't want to get people in to do the work. They want you to do the work for them and expect you to do all this work unpaid and drive yourself into the ground while you do it. Right. As a people, we are very hard working. Ah. Right? And they, they know this. And some of it probably stems from the, the, the slave trauma because we had to work hard. We couldn't stop. We couldn't have a break. Got whipped if we did. And so some of that... Some of that, yeah, killed. So some of that is still probably in the DNA. And so you will work hard. And, you know, you see these films, you see people saying, you have to work harder because you're black. Hell no. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. And this is something that we have to... We need to get out of that. Yeah. That. And, and fundamentally, if you're doing your shadow work, you're going to be building up your self-love, your self-esteem. And you will not entertain that yeah. behavior or treatment. Exactly. exactly. So if you're entertaining in that kind of treatment, it's because you still need to do the inner work more. Mm -hmm. Just say a little bit more about what shadow work is. Define shadow work for those that don't know what it is. The shadow work is literally looking at your traumas, your issues, your thought processes, your behaviors. Mm. It's about checking, why do I feel insecure? Why do I have low self-esteem? Why are my relationships failing? Why do I have issues with men or women? Why do I put other people first? Okay, all these sort of questions, we need to go within. We need to look mm -hmm. at the the shadow part of ourselves, the unevolved parts of ourselves, yeah. the darker parts of ourselves that keep us in fear, that keep us um, feeling insecure, that keep us feeling less than, less than, mm. less than, mm. right? Why do you feel less than? Why are you carrying shame or guilt? Sometimes you don't even realize you're carrying guilt and shame. Mm. And through the into therapy, you realise, oh my God, and I'm carrying other people's shame, not even my shame. Ah, oh, come on now. And we're carrying white shame, we've internalised right. it. Right. We've internalised it. It, uh, it. When you go into therapy, you start to unpack so much that you didn't realise. Yeah. Why am I suffering from depression? Why am I anxious all the time? What lies behind your anxiety? Mm. Yeah. Start to explore. Yeah. When you start to explore what's the hidden parts of yourself, that's the shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is so worth doing. Yeah. And just to add to what, what you're saying about the shadow work, another way that I explain it to my clients is I use what I call the triangle of awareness. Right. So the three points are relationship with self, relationship with others. Mm hmm relationship to whiteness right relationship with self relationship to others mm -hmm. and relationship to whiteness so if you're doing the shadow work you have to explore those three points in order to get a full holistic view of you know is your insecurity to do with the relationships that you've had in the present are your relationships to do with um, relationships that you've had in your family what is the relationship that you've had with your parents mm -hmm. is it historical mm -hmm. is your insecurity and fear of visibility and shame about showing up whether it's in the workplace or whether it's in relationships or whatever it is is that fear and shame of visibility come back from our ancestors that could have been strung up from strung up to a tree yes for thinking yes. that they're an uppity Negro. Yes, absolutely. It's, the more you become aware of yourself, your experiences in this lifetime and your experiences in other lifetimes, the more empowered you become because yeah. then you can heal it. When you become aware of it, you can do something about it. Right. But going around with no self-awareness you're going to become a cropper. Yeah. You're going to internalise 
what the system says who you are. Yes. Okay. And this is this is the reason why, you know, people have their own ideas about, you know, what they're doing in terms of today, in terms of the the, the queen and all of that kind of stuff. Now, I but the reason why I'm not going to bash people that do that is because I think a lot of them, they you know, in therapy we call it they we've identified with the the oppressor. Yes. Stockholm people, syndrome. Right. People are asleep. Okay. They don't understand what's happening for them and so they identify i'm not saying everyone you know is thinking like this but i think there are a lot of people in our community that think like this because we're so unaware and we've been trained yeah okay to pedestalize our oppressor yeah and that's what that behavior is about yes yes absolutely that's what that behavior is about so when you see people behaving in a certain type of way just have compassion for them. Mm. Yes. Definitely. Just have compassion for them. Definitely. Because they don't know any better. And mm. I believe that in doing so, those people will wake up when it's right, when the time is right for them. Yeah, everybody's waking up at a different rate, different speed. Yeah. And for those of us that are awake to just keep leading the way, actually. Yeah. And not judge, not judge those that are still asleep, but just keep doing what we're doing so that they, they will follow um, mm. will and that's that's okay yeah um yeah and it is frustrating it can be frustrating when you see it definitely. it's painful mm. you know it's painful but that's also how the system operates because then we turn against each other mm -hmm. you know and that's how the system wants us to be turning against each other yeah yeah you know so we, 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 our power, the power is in doing our shadow work. Yep. You know, doing your shadow work, becoming more aware. Mm -hmm. Becoming yeah. more aware. Because yeah. the more aware we are, like you said, Yvonne, we make different, you have to make different choices because once you know, you can't unknow it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you cannot unknow it. You cannot go back. It will feel very uncomfortable to go back. Yeah. 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 And to be gentle. Yes. The gentle yeah. is so important. Having compassion for oneself is so important. Not yeah. shutting yourself, not beating yourself up. Not, you know, be very mindful of your self-talk. When you make a mistake, what do you say to yourself? I've heard people mm -hmm. say, I did that. Help, excuse me? Please exactly. don't call yourself stupid. Exactly. Be kind to yourself and just switch the switch it and just say, oh my goodness, I made that mistake, but it's okay. I will learn from it and just move yeah. on. There, you there, there. Make mistakes, but you are not a mistake. Exactly. It's probably a learning. Um, treat yourself as you would a loving, a little child. And that's about you nurturing, reparenting your inner child. Yeah. All what you didn't receive from your parents, perhaps the loving, nurturing, comforting words and hugs that you didn't get from your parent, start doing that to yourself. Reparent yeah. yourself. That's also part of the shadow work. Learn yes. to do that for yourself. Yes. That inner child work is also really important. Oh. It's, 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 it's okay. one of the key parts. It is self-parenting work and the inner child work is, is such an important part of this process, you know? Yeah. And this is what, this is what true liberation is. Yes. This is what true liberation is. It's not necessarily going to a march or, you know, putting a black screen on your social media. All of that stuff is all, you know, it's, it has its place, mm. but this is the real work. Yeah. Yeah. And this, you have to be serious about doing this work because it's no joke. It's no joke it, and it, it's not easy, but you don't have to do it in isolation. Yeah. Do it, get support. If you don't, if you, if you don't have a therapist, you can, you can do it with someone, hold and be accountable to each other, with each other. You know, it, it's, yeah. some people need that intervention. They need a therapist. Not everybody necessarily does. They, they can do it without. Um, but do it, just do yeah. it, you know. Yeah. And take your time as well. So here's the thing. 
our healing is about what we do individually and what we do also as a community. But I also understand, and this is a conversation I always have with, you know, with my, with my clients, because I, in my mastermind, because so many of them have been hurt by people that have been close to them. Of course. The idea of sitting in front of a, another black therapist or sitting, you know, with a group of other black people and doing this work is just absolutely terrifying. And, and I put my hand up, you know, I was like that. Mm. I was like, there is no way that I'm good, I can be this vulnerable with another, mm. ther- with another black person because, okay. you know, because of the trauma yes. of what I've experienced in the past from other black people from people that were supposed to love me and care about me you know and I think this is something that is not talked about enough you know mm. and one of the things that I've always shared and that I always talk about and I, I, I encourage the conversation as part of my the group therapy that I do is for people to have that conversation definitely you yeah. know somebody's just put in the comments I used to be afraid of other black women because of the trauma yes that is uh, same here. I remember when I first started training, um, the supervisor that I had, oh my God, the, the, the feelings that she brought up in me were very much similar to the feelings that I had with my stepfather. Wow. But she was quite abusive anyway. And I had to get out of that relationship and I had to find someone else. Yeah. And so it, it, is, it is a scary concept sometimes. Yeah. But you have to, this is where it's really important to trust your intuition as well. Mm. The more you learn to trust your intuition, you can seek out someone who is trustworthy, someone who, who will hold sacred space for you. Yeah. And the more you do the work, the more you're going to be able to trust others. And I, I this is one thing that I'm very passionate about is bringing women of colour together in sacred space. Yeah. And so I've held a couple of, sister circles in person mm. the last one was last sunday it was so powerful mm. the ladies held each other as as they cried you know mm. they felt safe in that space and i'm very i'm very um word mindful of how who i allow in that space i make to make sure that it is safe and mm. they can also connect with each other outside of these spaces so that they can have some support because it can be a lonely journey doing this work. Yeah, it can. You, know? you need community. You can't do this stuff by yourself. No. You know, I, this is something that, that comes up a lot as well that I hear other, other black women saying, you know, they've read books and tried to do their own self-help stuff on their own. And it is because of that fear of other black women because yeah. they've been so traumatized, whether it's right. mother wound stuff or, you know, aunties or, or whatever yeah. that was being abusive or whatever it is. Mm. There's this yeah. thing in our community about not trusting other black people and other, other black women. Yes. And yeah. that is preventing us from having real sisterhood. Really? It really you know? is. So but it, it yeah. And it's very powerful when sisters can come together. Very powerful. So yeah. this is why it really is important to do the work so that you can, start taking mm. risks and be in that space and yeah. know that you, you can feel held and and it's sacred and it and it, it's yeah healing, yeah you know? it's about being able to name it as well once you name that i mean i'm sure there'll be women that we're watching this live going oh my god that's what it is because i know for me yeah once i had that realization that actually it was historical and also family staff and whatever mm-hmm you've got something to build on. Yes. You know, and once everybody in the group is, is starts to talk about their anxieties around being around other black women and stuff like that, it becomes, it somehow dissipates the power. Yes. That's it. Talk it, talk it. And it will, as you say, dissipate the power, but by holding on to it, it just festers and grows and grows. So we need to, to name it. Like it's a bit like shame, name it and release it can't survive again it can't so once it's once it's in your consciousness mm. it can't survive yeah you know so when it's when it when we're, when we're asleep and it's in the unconscious that's when we just we have this blanket thing i can't get close to black women yeah yeah because it's in your the trauma is in your unconscious and you don't yeah. understand it yeah. and your body's just reacting to what you've experienced in the past mm. and so it's, that's how it's going to show up yeah yeah um, you know that's how it's going to show up 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that that's that's where your power is. You know, for those of you that are thinking, I don't even know where to start. What does all of this mean? You know, um, find a space. Yeah, find a space. Take your time, whether it's one-on-one therapy, whether it's a, a community group, whether it's a sister circle, whether it's group therapy or whatever, find a space that's going to work for you and give mm. yourself some wiggle time. Like I'm going to do two or three sessions with this therapist and see how I get on. Yes. And you know? Then you can find someone else. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But put yourself first and invest in yourself. Stop yeah. spending on yourself invest in yourself and your yeah. growth yeah you know inner beauty is more important than outer mm. it really really is yeah. you know so many women they spend so much money on beauty products and this and that to try to try and actually fix what's inside yeah it's a cover and i think that yeah. you know as a community we're quite vibrant anyway you know, yeah. we're a vibrant community. We love our this, that, and the other. But I also feel that some of that is about trying to hide or cover how we the, the the shame and whatever that we're feeling inside. And you know, getting a new, buying stuff and over overspending. That's just a quick fix. Yeah, and be honest with yourself. You know, am I doing this because I am hiding, or am I doing this because mm. I love? You know, but be honest. Yeah, be honest. And you'd be surprised if you start investing as opposed to spending, you you may find that your bank account grows. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It is very true. It is true. Because you're not holding. You can't manifest when you've got all of that pain. No, you cannot. You cannot. You cannot. It's, and, it's, it's you know, this is all about the law, the 12 laws, isn't it? The law of vibration, the law of... Yeah. The law of manifestation is very powerful. And, you know, many people follow the law of attraction and they do this course on trying to manifest abundance and all of that kind of stuff. And it's to no avail. And you know why? Because you're carrying too much trauma. Exactly. And, and it's work. trauma in your root chakra and your sacral chakra. That's where your manifestation lays. Yeah. And if you're out of balance, you're not going to manifest. Yeah. You are not going to manifest yeah. so it boils down to getting deep in there and really sorting out mm. your foundation your yeah. root your foundation mm. if that is working if it's not solid if you don't feel like you have a sense mm. of belonging yeah it's going to be very hard to manifest mm. there is no microwave healing i tell my clients this all the time there no. is no such thing as microwave healing. You have oh. to do the work. You have one to do day at a time. Thunder roast healing. <laughs> <laughs> there is no such thing. No matter how it doesn't matter how much money you got, no matter how much you know, you, it just don't work. You have to you have to be gentle. You have to just take your time yeah. and work through it. This is a life commitment. It is a life commitment. This is a life commitment. And you have to one of the things that I've always said is that I have to understand or accept that the work that I'm doing may not manifest or, or, or um, what's the word? It may not be able to be harvested so much in my lifetime. Yeah. It may not, it may, I'm only going to get so much of it in my lifetime, but I have to do the work thinking that, okay, I'm going to pass the baton to my daughter. Absolutely. The ancestral continuum. Right absolutely and right. if and if you are i'm gonna i'm gonna be cheeky now if you're unfortunate to have to come back to planet earth <laughs> mm. when you in, when you come back you will you will see more more benefits yeah 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 so, so i'm just mindful gosh it's quarter past 12 already I've been doing this for hour and 15 minutes <laughs> So I, I, I was going to do um, a, a short meditation for the collective. Yeah. Um, and, and, a, and a reading. Reading, yes, that would be amazing. I'm thinking which one should I do first. Let's do the reading. 
Okay. And then we end with the meditation. Focus the um the meditation on the reading. Mm. Okay. So this is a new set of cards that I, I have. Um activation. Mm. Gate light activation. Or cards and I and I love them. I think they they kind of go beyond the 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 kind of everyday stuff. But it's also about helping us to remember our power and our greatness. So this is a reading for the collective. And what we need to do in the present. Okay. So the card has come up. Oh, this is powerful. I did this um, with my sister circle the, the first time round. Chamber of the Violet Flame. Karmic release and radical transformation. Oh, wow. Powerful. Karmic release. Yes. Right. There you go. Bring that, yes. Bring it. Just what we're talking about. So let's, um, let's have a read what, the, what the, the book says. Probably just confirming what we've been talking about now. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, find this card. Um, and does it come under violent flame? Let's see. It's not. It's not alphabetical. Oh dear. Let's see, sorry. Right. Okay, sorry for that delay. So the Violet Flame is a spiritual retreat space that holds a powerful energy of transformation and transmutation. It can be visited in meditation invoked through prayer and affirmation. Spiritually, it is seen within a chamber, often as a giant roaring flame and sometimes with silver and gold shining through the violet. When we connect with the Violet Flame, we are being given the opportunity to detach from lower vibrational experiences and turn darkness into light. And ultimately, this is the gateway of alchemy. Alchemy is the art of turning lead into gold. And so from an energetics perspective, the violet flame is where we place all that is leaden and heavy in our life and turn it into a golden opportunity. So when you receive this card, know that the violet flame of transformation has been brought to you by your angels and guides. They are encouraging you to see that you are in a space of radical transformation. Information can be overwhelming, but know the hand of the divine is leading the way. All past trauma is now being cleared from your energy. Stay focused on releasing all of the energies that are no longer serving you. The violet flame is here to transmute fear into love. If any fear is rising up inside you, know that it is simply a call for love. Call in the strongest form of love you know, and allow those in your inner circle to support you through this transformational time. You are the, an alchemist with the capacity to take all of the leaden aspects of your life and turn them into golden opportunities. You can align your life with the divine plan now and live in a more purposeful way. Mm. Ashe. Ashe, this is really powerful. Is so powerful. The, the meditation will be invoking the violet flame into your space. So if you are already... I will invite you to, if you've got some frankincense or sage or palacento, you may want to burn some now. Don't worry. It will only be about 10 minutes, or you can, you can spray some, um, what's it called? Florida water 
and just to clear the space, burning thick, and just be in a quiet space. You can lie down or you can sit up. And I just invite you to be in this space of self as we invoke the violet flame. So just taking in some deep, relaxing breaths. Focusing on your breath. Slowly breathing in and breathing out. Just breathing in love and breathing out all that no longer serves you. Breathing in self-acceptance. Breathing out anxiety. Breathing in compassion. Breathing out shame. Just coming into your quiet, sacred space within you. Notice what this safe space looks like for you. It could be a small garden, the beach, meadows, even the clouds. Notice what you see, feel and hear in this safe space. You are protected, divinely protected. And we call in your guides be with you in this space to protect you. And we're calling in the ancient ancestors who have healed, who are powerful and mighty, to be with you in this space too. And just allow yourself to go on a journey Allow your spirit to guide you. And as you go on this journey, you walk along a meadow, around, along a winding pathway. And as you go further on the path, See ahead of you two pillars of light. You become curious and you approach the pillars of light. And you feel the energy from these pillars of light, which invites you to walk through them. And as you walk through, you start to feel some powerful energy and you see violet flames. These violet flames, they whisk around you, they whiz around you, they engulf you and you allow these violet flames to release karma from past lives, karma from your ancestral lineage. Allow these violet flames to transform and transmute the energy that you are holding. Release the energy of fear. Release the energy of shame. Release the energy of grief. Release the energy of sadness. Allow these energies to be released from your auric field. The violet flame is working, working with you and you are allowing this release to take place. And you are inviting in more love 
more compassion, more joy, more bliss, more abundance into the spaces. Open up your heart, beloved, to receive love, to be love, to show love, because you are love. Breathe this in. Know that you are a powerful being. You have come here to do wonderful, magnificent and powerful works. Remember your purpose for being here. You feel renewed, allowing the violet flame to continue to work with you today. But for now, being in gratitude for this healing of the violet flame, you start to walk away. Thanking the guides and the angels and the ancestors for this healing today. And you walk through the gateway and you come back into your safe space. Allowing this energy to integrate Coming back in your safe space, feeling somewhat different, feeling renewed, feeling lighter and brighter. And on the count of three, I welcome you back to full waking consciousness. Three two, and one. Welcome back, beloved, welcome back. Mm. Welcome back. Okay. That was wonderful. It was really lovely. That was powerful. The violet yeah. flame is very powerful. Mm. Really, really powerful. powerful. So just to kind of, um, to wrap up where we are, Yvonne, I can't thank you enough for thank suggesting you. that we do this. Um, it was <laughs> really powerful. Yeah. So thank you so much for, you know, for coming to Hold Space and um, sharing your wisdom and yourself and, um, yeah, just allowing us to to do this. For, and I feel like we owe this to our ancestors and yeah. I think they're very proud of us. Like, for space, you know, yeah. for the community. So for anybody that wants to connect with you, that wants to work with you, um, you know, just share share with the um with the audience how people can get in contact with you and work with you if they want to. So um you can Google Yvonne J. Douglas and all my handles will come up. Um, you know, or I'm the Starseed Alchemist. Again, that that's the easiest way to just get hold of me. My website is yvonnejdouglas.com. Um, mm. Yeah, feel free to get in touch. Um, here to serve, it's a, it's a, it's a very powerful time um, and our work is necessary. What we're doing is mm. really essential right now and um, people need us, so I'm here to serve. Yeah. And I thank you as well for this this time that we've spent together with the collective and I thank those of you that have joined us. Um, re really appreciate it. And yeah, thanks for. Mm. Amazing. And for anybody that wants to work with me, um, you can go to my website. If you go to heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net. That's heal.juneallen.net. There's a lot of information there about how you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one, um, or you can work with me. In, I'm doing some study circles um, that are going to start in October. Um, and I'll be live tomorrow actually, um, sharing on the second book. Uh, which one is it? 
Well, I think it's this one, actually. The body is not an apology. Oh, hang on. So I'm going to be doing a... Um, I'm going to be reviewing this book tomorrow um, as one of the book selections that I've chosen for the notebook study that's going to be starting in October. Um, so you can find all my all the information about how you can work with me there. So I know that I did say in the middle of the live stream that we were going to show the books that we were using so people could screenshot them. So if you want to do your ones first, and I'll gather mine. I've got quite a few. What's the name of the artist and stuff? I can see the top, but we can't see the bottom. Okay, it's um, Kemet Imani. That's twisted. One. And the other one is the Ancestral Continuum. Okay, cool. I think I'm going to be getting that one. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And who's that one by? The Ancestral Continuum by? Natalia O'Sullivan and Nicola Graydon. Okay. Great. So the ones that I used, um, the one that I used for the libation is called Speaking with Spirit. Okay, by the Ra, I don't know how you pronounce that, Seki Arts Temple. Okay, that's that one, what I used for the libation. And the reading was this one, Love and Rage, um, The Path of Liberation Through Anger, Lama Rod Owens. Okay, this, this guy's got a lot of, you know, he's been done a lot of podcasts and stuff like that. It's got some amazing stuff. It's really great. So, you know, you can learn a lot from his work. I think that was it. I don't know if, the, if anybody else wanted to know that. I know I talked about Reshma as well. I'm going to big up Reshma's work as well because I love his work. Oh. My grandma's hands. I spoke about him. Um, did I talk about anybody else? I think that's it, isn't it? That we spoke about today? I think so. Yeah. If, if yeah. we've missed anything, just please send you know send send me a DM um, and obviously we can we can do that. If anybody's got any questions or anything about anything that Ivan mm -hmm. and I have shared in this live. Please send us a DM as well, and we'd be happy to, um, we'd be happy to um, to answer the questions. Okay, thank you so much, um, Candy and uh, Candice, for, for putting that in the in the chat. Really, really appreciate it for anybody that wants the details. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much, everybody that's watching. Um, I am humbled to serve the community as always. Thank you for for taking the time out to spend time with us. I hope that this has given you some freedom um, in just giving yourself permission to to do our grief work as a community. This was very very important. Yeah. This life would one hundred percent be saved. I don't I don't I don't normally take my lives down. So you know, and I'm going to send it out as well to to my email list and stuff. So you can come back and watch it again if you need to. Um, so oh, yeah, have an amazing day, everyone. Yes. Were, you, were you going to say something? If I was going to say, hopefully I'll be able to kind of repost you, the live on my page as well um, for, for, for my followers as well. I'm hoping that that's mm. possible. Um, I think the fact that you've tagged it, I think it will go into your... If you look in your live list, I think it should be in there because I tagged you. I think you should oh, be okay. in there. Brilliant. But check, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, you're so welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining and sharing your. I will go back and look because I know that some people did write some bits and bits and stuff in the comments, and I wasn't able to read all of it. So okay. I will go back and read them and obviously respond um, okay. personally if there's anything in there that I've missed out. But have an amazing day, okay? Yes. And just be gentle with yourself yes. for the rest of the day. And um, you know, we'll see you all soon. Yes. All right. And so we'll thank you, everybody. Thing. today would be a very good day to do some tribal dancing for your ancestors and yes stuff it's very powerful um, and it's fun as well so it doesn't always have to be you know dreary stuff and sad stuff we can you know healing can be fun as well so do some tribal dancing for your ancestors hey amazing <laughs> amazing lovely to see you lenora just in bye, bye, bye. Bye, everyone. You take care. And I'll see you next time. Have a, have a wonderful day. All right. Take care. Yes, beat the drum. Yes, right. <laughs> the as well. That was amazing. That would be amazing. Do some drumming. Yeah. yeah. Do that as well. All right, everyone. Take care. And bye. -bye. I'll see you Much soon. love. Take care. Bye.